Hi, this is Tom McElroy at Wild Survival Skills. In this video, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to travel a half mile into a cave using only primitive means. At the back end of this cave is an absolutely pure vein of clay that I'm going to collect to make pottery from, so that I can purify acorns, make acorn flour, and eventually bread. Before I do any of this though, I need to think about what tools I need to get in and out of this cave safely. Okay, once I get to the cave entrance, I'm going to need a fire. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a hand drill. This is one of my favorite hand drills and the very first hand drill I got 30 years ago. This is called mullein stalk, and it um, has fuzzy leaves. It's a perennial, so it has fuzzy leaves one year and then puts off this flower stalk the next. In the fall, this dies off, and it makes an incredible hand drill. By midsummer, like now, it's kind of starting to rot, and so I need to find a section on here to make sure it's not rotten. And once I do, that should be good enough to make a fire. All right, in order to make a torch, there's a few things that you can use in survival. One, you can take oil and fat and you know, soak something in them and burn that natural fiber or that material. The problem is in a survival situation, you don't wanna burn fat. It contains thousands and thousands of calories and that's the last thing you wanna burn up. So really the only practical thing in this situation to use for a torch is to use pine sap. Um, so I've actually got spruce cones here and spruce sap. And what I'm gonna do is basically just take this sap and melt it into this pine cone as much as I can. Um, I can just smear it in for now. And then once I've got it smeared in pretty good, I'm just gonna light up a fire, melt it in, and really kind of get it into the structure of this pine cone as much as I can. And what this does is acts like an amazing candle. When I've used these in the past, they've lasted for 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm gonna make a few and test them out and just make sure I know the exact amount of time that they're gonna last so I can plan my trip in and plan my trip out knowing that I'm gonna have enough time. Okay, so I've cut down some maple saplings. I only need about uh, four torch holders. Well, I'm gonna have probably 20 or 30 pine cones soaked in resin. Um, I only need four saplings so that I can switch out the pine cones as I move my way into the cave. So right there is my torch. Um, I'm gonna melt this sap in and then it's ready to go. There we go. Okay, it's been about 12 minutes so far according to the camera and this thing's still going. So I'm feeling very confident. Um, it's not putting out enough light at this point. So at the point where it burns down this much, this is when I would take my other one, light it up and just keep the chain going. So sometimes maybe I'll have two going at the same time while one's fading, but this is gonna provide me with plenty of time. If it's 15 minutes per torch, and I've got 20 torches, technically I could take four hours. I'm thinking getting in and out of the cave is gonna take me probably an hour to hour and 15 minutes. So if I get 20 of these pine cones done, that should be more than enough. Okay, now that I know I have light, the next thing I need to get the clay out of the cave is some sort of large pack basket. 
I decided to weave this pack basket from Red Osher Dogwood, Spruce Rootlets, and Willow Saplings. Well, to me, sitting in a meadow like this and weaving a basket is one of the most relaxing and fun activities I can do in nature. Unfortunately, no matter how I edited the instructions for the four different types of weaving patterns I used, this came out kind of boring. So what I'm doing here is just speeding through, showing you how this basket is made. But for those of you that are committed and interested in learning, I've added a link down below. And if you really want to learn the four different methods of weaving that I put into this pack basket, you can click that and get detailed instructions. Okay, admittedly, I got a little carried away with this. It was just such a nice day sitting out here by the river and up in that meadow. Uh, and then I just kept going and made this thing much bigger than I needed it to be. Probably only gonna get about half full of clay when I get into this cave. But all I need to do now is fold down this rim or make a rim by folding down these spokes. Okay, I've just stumbled upon something that's gonna be incredibly helpful. My biggest concern going in this cave is I'm gonna be half mile deep in this cave and my torch is gonna go out. And I'm gonna sit there with my hand drill in a wet, completely dark cave trying to get a fire again. Uh, it seems like a, a really, really bad backup plan, but as up to this point, that's exactly what my backup plan was. Until now, I was walking through this birch forest and I found this. This is what's known as chaga. It's a fungus that grows on birch trees and it's incredible. So you cut this off, I already did, but you cut this thing off um, and you can see this orange fungus in there. If this is dry and I touch a spark to it, even the smallest little spark, this will continue to smolder for hours and hours until this whole thing is burned up. So at this point, what I can do is barely light this when I'm entering the cave and carry it with me. Use my torch for light, but use this to ensure that if that torch goes out, I can quickly pull some tinder out, hold it against this, blow it into a flame, relight my torch and keep going. So this is a huge um, relief for me that I'm not going in this cave with no backup plan if a torch goes out. Okay, so I'm right outside the front of the cave. I'm definitely actually a little bit nervous about this idea, um, but I've got my basket ready to be filled with clay. I've got a bunch of torches um, all ready to go. And I've got extra pine cones out here. I've got a bunch in the bag. I've got my tinder that um, if I happen to have a torch go out, um, I can use my chaga, which will be already lit as I go into the cave and smoldering. I can light up my tinder with that and relight everything I need. Um, you know, my biggest concern is losing light or using up too many pine cones. So I've got about 35 pine cones. So I'm thinking about the time I hit 15 pine cones for torches is when I have to turn around and get out. If I use up more than half, I'm almost guaranteed I'm not gonna get out with enough light. Each pine cone tends to be about 10 minutes burning in my experience, and so that should give me plenty of time to get in and get out, um, but I still need to make sure that if I hit that halfway mark, no matter what happens, I have to turn around. All right, now I gotta light my torches before I go into the cave, and what I'm gonna use for that is uh, a somewhat unusual fire-making technique using the chaga. If you happen to find this in a survival situation, you're in luck, because just by rubbing a stick against it really fast and getting it hot enough, this whole thing will become the coal. The trick with these rocks is I have to make sure they don't, they don't get in my way, but they're still holding down this piece of chaga really well. Because I need both hands free for this. Okay. Jam that somewhere in there. There we go. All right, just using both hands here. Start to rub back and forth. You can see yet, but it's already smoking pretty good.
So just by doing that, I can get this chocolate to light. Um, it's definitely still a little more difficult than I want it to be. But once this stuff lights, it just stays lit. And so it gets to a, a point where it's hot enough and this will never go out. Okay, so this is lit. It's going really good now. I can just let that sit for a while and grow. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is bust off this piece and just put it right into my tinder pile. Nice. Um, I don't have to worry about knocking it out. It's just, there's nothing that's gonna stop this. The only way to stop this is to cut it out. I've doused this with water before, come back a couple minutes later and it was still going. Um, and so this will just go directly in my tinder pile. Maybe even just put some smaller chunks on there. I could put some powder on there, other little pieces that have broken off. And this stuff is just gonna light up like crazy, but no, no huge need to rush this because this is gonna last hours and hours and hours. So just put it on there properly. My tinder's even kind of wet. Normally I'm really finicky about tinder, but with this chaga, it's not a concern. Okay, let it sit there. I've even put chaga in things before and uh, let it dry out, wet tinder, let it sit for 20 minutes and then come back to it and blown it into a flame. So every little piece is gonna go in there that's already lit and now I can save this for later. There we go. This tinder's definitely wet. There we go. All right, I got a fire. Just gotta go with that to some birch bark, ready to go, light up my torches, and then head it into the cave. Okay, here goes the first torch. Pretty well lit, and it's time to go. Here we go. opened up in a really big room. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, good spot for a brain. That was a tight squeeze to crawl through, but uh, I've uh, relit my third torch now. The second one's going out a little bit, um, but I feel pretty confident. They're burning 10 minutes each, so I should have plenty, and uh, chog is still going. It's definitely the whole thing's lit up right now, so Feeling pretty confident about that in case one of these goes out. Um, but yeah, I'm deep in now, so this is getting a little, little sketchy, but time to keep going.
All right, it's time for a changeover on my torches. I'm trying to keep two going, so once one is about uh, two-thirds, three-quarters of the way done, I light the next one and use them both for a little while. And so before this one goes out, I'm going to light this guy and then stick a new pine cone in the other one so it's ready to go for the next time. This way I have a nice rotation and I never have to risk one dropping and going out. So that's all it takes. And then I'll switch out on this one. If you can see that, I get rid of this pine cone. I'm kind of leaving myself a trail of pine cones too, which is good in case I have any question on the way out of here of where I'm going. I stick this one in here. So, so far, my operation seems pretty well thought out. I don't have any huge surprises, but we'll see how it goes. Now I'm gonna put this one back in the bag and it's ready to go for next time. Okay, but I gotta keep moving. Tight squeeze right here. Oh, my feet are absolutely drenched. <laughs> I don't know why I like doing this stuff, but I do. Oh, this floor is all clay and mud puddles, and my feet are getting completely stuck in it. But it's a good sign. That means I'm getting into that deep vein of clay, which is really good stuff. Oh, I think I'm there. Oh, that was a tight squeeze. Okay, so I can tell I'm getting into the clay because the ground is absolutely disgusting. Oh, it's just a big mud puddle. Um, so I need to get to one of these banks real quick and just start digging out a vein. Okay, it happened. I've completely uh, had my lights go out. <laughs> it's a little bit terrifying to be out here with zero light if this doesn't work, but it looks like it's gonna work. my chaga against my tinder and I'm back in business. I really needed to light these pine cones to get my torches lit again. <laughs> it's definitely a relief being out here with no light. Um, I'm past the point of no return but uh, we're all good and I'm actually at the clay spot. So this is going to work out just fine. Um, so what I'm going to do is post this up here. Now you can see, keep my chaga from burning up. Okay. You can see right in here, I've got a ton of clay. 
So all of this stuff right there is a really solid vein of clay and just works incredibly well for pottery. So this is what I came for. So I'm just going to get out one of these sticks, um, dig out a bunch of chunks, and hopefully get this going. I'm okay on my pine cone count, so I'm going to light up a bunch so I can get some light out here. Um, and then just start frantically digging, trying to get enough to do the pot that I want to do, and then get out of here as quick as possible. And that whole vein of clay is right there, so I'm gonna get on that. And chug it, absolutely saved the day. Um, if I had done that any other way, I don't think I'd be able to get a hand drill going in this mud pile. Um, so I'm really, really, really glad I came up with that idea. Um, that wasn't the original idea, and it's really saved the day. So I'm gonna dump out my pine cones and start filling the bottom with clay, and then I'll refill it later with it. Pine cones on top. So this is just absolutely pure clay. There's no anything else in it, which is nice because I don't have to do any purifying, which in a primitive situation is kind of difficult sometimes when you don't already have a pot. But I can get these huge chunks of clay out of here and fill my basket with all of this. And if I have a good supply of this, I'll be ready to go for making a a basket. So hopefully I've got about four or five minutes at best that I can get these chunks of clay out of here um, before I have to just start hiking out. So this is going pretty well. I'm really getting into a nice vein right here, especially at the bottom here. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. So yeah, definitely a long way to go for um, pure clay, but super fun. And if I can have a stash of pure clay like this, it's gonna save me so much time in processing. So get a couple more big chunks and then I'm gonna head out of here. All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> time to go. Big room now. I'm getting closer to the end, but opens up real nice here. Oh man, I see light. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, I've got light up ahead. Chuck the torches at this point. Time to go. Oh, it's a relief. The fresh air is really nice. The, the pine sap burning does put off a little bit of a toxic smoke, so it wasn't much of a problem. This cave feels well ventilated, but oh, it feels good to be out. There we are. Alright, that might have been one of the dumbest things I've ever done, but it was amazing. It was super fun. I came out with six pine cones with sap on them, so that would have lasted me at least another half an hour if I needed more light. Um, but, you know, it felt like it was cutting it close, so I'm glad I got out in time. Um, yeah, it was really cool. I've got some absolutely pure clay, and now I can make a really nice clay vessel to purify acorns in. All right, so I've got a ton of raw clay. I've got multiple baskets for collecting acorns in. What I need to do now is transform that clay into something that's going to be able to handle the shock of being thrown in a campfire. So I'm going to make a pottery vessel, purify acorns, make acorn flour, and eventually bread. Hopefully you liked part one. If so, please subscribe, hit the like button, and go check out part two.